Now that we talked about illustration, here's how we're going to turn you into a spooky self-portrait, timber and style. Use this paper and start with your head shape. Remember, you don't have to use things exactly off this paper, just use them as reference. Make sure your head is nice and big. You really want to fill up that paper. And when you pick your eyes and draw those on, you also need to make sure those are nice and big. The big eyes and the big head are really the most important parts of making sure your self-portrait turns out really good. We're drawing with regular pencil right now so we can go light. Notice how I'm going around my circle several times until I get a shape that I'm happy with drawing lightly so I know that I can erase. We can use what we know about proportion and make sure the eyes are in the middle of the head, but you can also use your pencil as a ruler to make sure things are symmetrical. So you'll see here that my right eye is a lot lower than my left eye, so I am going to fix that, but my hands were a little shaky while recording. Your eyebrows can be big or small. Uh, I like to do mine big to match the big eyes. Uh, and really emphasize how big the that eye part of the head is since all the other features are going to be so small. And the nice thing about eyebrows is they do not have to match like your eyes do. They can be a little, a little off, a little expressive. One of my favorite parts about these portraits is the nose. I love the timber and noses and how they look like you have your nose pushed up on your face uh, because they really emphasize the nostrils. And your nostrils are one of the hardest parts about doing a more realistic self-portrait. It's hard to not make your nostrils look weird. And when they're emphasized, they're kind of supposed to look weird. Now the mouth is where I'm gonna go off script a little bit. I'm gonna try to combine the surprised mouth uh, with the mouth with like the stitching because I like the surprised expression, but I really like the stitching element uh, for this one. So I'm going to start with the surprised mouth and then kind of add the stitching in and see what happens. So this is a good reminder uh, that you do not need to go exactly off the reference paper. That's a good place to start. Uh, with some features that match Tim Burton's style. But at the end of the day, this is your artwork and we wanna make sure those eyes and head are nice and big and the other features are small. But beyond that, you are really welcome to add your own twist to things. Now, when I put in my pupils, I wanna keep those nice and small because remember, we're going to make the eyes really bright white and we want that to pop. We want nice, small pupils. I have mine looking to the side. When we go to the hair, you can use a mirror or your iPad and look at your own hair. Uh, or you can use one of my self-portrait guides to look at different styles of cartoon hair. We want to keep your hair really simple. Remember, this is cartoon, this is stylized, um, but try to pick a style that matches you. And you'll notice here, again, I'm combining two different styles uh, to get the hairstyle I want. I want it to look like when I have it in a little bun, when I throw it up in class, because we're doing something messy, and I have my wispies coming out. Um, I added my earrings and I put on a little outfit as well. And that's about it for the step. So now you're going to make your own spooky portrait and then we're going to learn about charcoal. For the charcoal part of our portraits, we're using charcoal pencils, white charcoal, and a tool called a kneaded eraser. When you use a charcoal pencil, it works the same way as a regular pencil, but it's much darker and much smudgier. So when you run your finger over it, all that pigment, all that dark tone is going to smudge all over your paper, all over your fingers. Um, and that smudging is what's so great about charcoal because you can blend it. 
and it's also very, very dark. Pencils really draw gray, uh, but with this charcoal, you can get this beautiful, beautiful dark color. White charcoal is just a pigmented uh, white colored pencil. We're going to use white colored pencils and white charcoal. And it blends very much the same way and it's nice and opaque. Make sure you don't use the same finger you use to blend the charcoal pencil over the white uh, or it'll turn it a muddy gray and make it kind of invisible on the gray paper. The kneaded eraser is a really fun tool. Um, it looks and feels a lot like clay, which you're familiar with, and you just rub it over the charcoal to pick up the pigment. It doesn't work on really dark where you colored really hard with the charcoal pencil, but it will clean up all the smudges from getting charcoal on your hands really, really nicely. And you should know that it does not really work on the white charcoal or the white colored pencil. So don't expect to be able to clean up smudges from that. Be a little more careful with that when you're blending. For your portrait, we are going to basically trace over all of your lines with a charcoal pencil. So this is exactly how you would do Sharpie tracing. If you drew something out in pencil and then you wanted to trace it with a Sharpie, we're doing it exactly the same way, except we're using charcoal pencil. I'm jumping around a little bit here just to show you the different parts, um, but you don't have to jump around while you're tracing. Do one piece at a time. But unlike Sharpie, remember that charcoal pencil smudges, so you need to be careful of where you are placing your hand. Now that I am all traced, I am going to start smudging on purpose. I am just taking my finger and running it over all those lines nice and slowly and smudging them out. Remember when we look at Tim Burton's work, uh, how dark and shadowy the eyes are? That's the most important part to blend out. We really want to get that nice shadowy dark blend around the eyes. Uh, and it also gets rid of the pencil texture and just makes it a nice rich black. One good trick to keep yourself from smudging your whole piece is to put a paper towel down under your hand uh, to protect your artwork and to protect your hand. You also can wrap your finger in the paper towel and then use your paper towel wrapped finger uh, and blend that way to keep your hands much more clean. The kneaded eraser is something you're going to use towards the end after we finish smudging our charcoal to clean up all those smudgy pieces out in the background. Finally, our last step is those nice bright white eyes. So I'm going to take my white charcoal or my white colored pencil and really carefully and thoroughly uh, color in those eyes. I don't want anything scribbly happening. I'm not scribbling the eyes white. I am completely filling uh, those beautiful big eyes with white pigment. And I am then going to blend it out, making sure I use a clean finger, not one that has black charcoal all over it. Um, and at the edges, I can let it blend in a little bit. Here, I'm using that kneaded eraser again to clean up those smudges. It is the best at cleaning up smudges. Don't try to use one of the pink erasers on this. And now, except for some smudging, I'm pretty much done. So I'm going to add a little bit of highlight with the white right under my eyes, on my nose. And then I'm going to go in and use that white to fill in the details of my earrings and make them look kind of shiny and metallic. So after you get all your charcoal nice and blended and you've taken some time to put in your details and use the kneaded eraser to clean up all that smudging, then we are all done. We have your final finished spooky portrait. All you have to do is sign.